Welcome to another instalment of Moon Monkey Podcast. On this episode we're going to do Independence Day Resurgence, directed by Roland Emmerich. And there will be spoilers. So the film's set 20 years after the first one, uh, following the alien invasion of 1996. This film picks up when that alien invasion's distress beacon is picked up by a second ship, which arrives on Earth to finish off the conquest of the planet. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty much a, a quite a similar story to the first one in a way. Yeah, it's a follow up to the first one, and a similar story of the aliens arrive and, and attack Earth. But there, in this one, there's more of a there's a bit more background yeah. as to what they're doing. <coughs> but we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, so the director Roland Emmerich, obviously responsible for the first Independence Day movie. Responsible. <laughs> responsible for it. Well, actually, he was responsible for this one. I should just say, like, he's uh, he's he did the first movie. Yeah, that's, that's all. That's about the best. I can you like the it. first one? I just felt responsible, so like you didn't like it. He was responsible for this. Yeah. No, the first one was a good film. Like yeah. the first one, I I did kind of like, and like everyone says, it is a popcorn movie. Hmm. And it's not deep, there's nothing serious to it. But it's a movie that you can sit and watch and really turn your brain off. Because you don't, there's not a lot to follow in it, it's just spectacle. But it does have characters that you can kind of get attached yeah. to and feel, oh, I hope they make it through, I hope things turn out right for them. So he's done, he's done a lot of disaster movies. Yeah. And he's, the Day After Tomorrow and uh, 2012 20, I hated 2012 I'll get that out there I haven't seen it it was awful it ruined three hours of my life <laughs> um, he's also did Godzilla yeah not the recent one but the the 90s Godzilla not everybody loved that yeah he worked on yeah he worked on Godzilla didn't he yeah and Stargate uh, and he's he's doing the new Independence Day there's a third one yeah uh, the, in the pipeline we'll get we'll get we'll into that, that later get the story. you can tell by Matt's yeah. uh, I voice seen, there I haven't seen like a lot of his other films like these disaster movies because yeah. they usually don't really appeal to me yeah uh, especially things like 2012 because I just when I saw that it just looked like destruction CG effects no story which I imagine is what it was and same with Day After Tomorrow did he do Day After Tomorrow as well yeah, he did that. I've not seen that, but twenty twelve. Yeah, the know, thing with the thing with Independence Day, it is a disaster movie, but it's also a sci-fi movie. Yeah, with aliens. So if you like sci-fi, you you're good. You're good sorted. The so, thing with twenty twelve and uh, the after tomorrow is there's no real villain in it. It's more like climate change. And in twenty twelve, I think it's just the apocalypse arrives. Is it? The villain is us. <laughs> Not us. We're the real humanity. Evil. We're the real evil here. But you've got a he- and this one we'll do a bit about the cast. And this one there's a huge cast. Yeah. Some would say too much cast. But returning characters <laughs> returning characters you've got Jeff Goldblum playing David Levinson. Yeah. Who we both will... He was the big draw for the film. Yeah. Like in the promo material, like, okay, Will Smith isn't gonna be back from the first one, but uh, Jeff Goldblum is yeah. enough maybe to sell Does tickets. It, yeah. And everybody, I've not heard anybody say a bad word about Jeff no. Goldblum. The main problem with him is that he's not in the movie enough, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. there's not a lot of Goldblum. Because you really think like this is going to be his story, because he is the one character that you know from the first film. And in the first film, well, they did do a decent story for him. They did him, like he was all the way through, and huh. he, they followed him yeah. on his journey. And this, it's kind of, he appears... I mean, he's not really in it much. I, th- I think, though, they said this movie was about passing the torch to, to younger yeah. characters and stuff. But, yeah, there, I mean, if you go and expect a lot of Jeff Goldblum, there's not a whole lot of Jeff Goldblum. Well, that's the thing, I suppose. If I'd known that beforehand, that it was passing the torch, then that would have been okay. It doesn't, it doesn't come across but in like the trailers. Some, like something like Force Awakens, where they pass the torch from like Harrison Ford and the older cast down to the newer cast, they worked that a lot better because they started with the... <laughs> The younger cast. Oh, this one kind of, yeah, yeah. starts the younger cast. But yeah, like, when they have Jeff Goldblum, you really think he's going to have more of a role than he does. Um, got Bill Pullman back as well. Bill yeah. Pullman. He as was President really Whitmore. He's I got like a beard. Beard, bearded Bill. <laughs> uh, he was really good. Uh, uh, but a lot of gravitas brought some, yeah, some yeah. of that back to the role. And he had one of the best bits in the first film with his speech uh, about the... Independence Day and like unifying the world and fighting against the alien menace. Yeah, and yeah. he kind of has the same role here, which is yeah, he comes in and delivers a, a speech and it's like we need to fight this again. We yeah, do the same thing. But one thing that I felt with his character, 
getting into the story a bit, they set up that he has this psychic link with the aliens and him and a couple other characters, but they never really play that as much as I thought they were going to. Through I, the think, I thought they'd done it quite a bit. They've done it quite a bit. I think it's just because they, they had that link with them before. Like, the aliens yeah. had... It just never seems to ter- come come to anything. Like, it's, it's just like when anything big's going to happen, they, they know beforehand. Like, they know they're arriving. Like, yeah. Bill Pullman, the whole thing about Bill Pullman's character is he knows they're arriving because he's having these dreams because he has that connection. Yeah. He's the warning beacon. That's the thing, I suppose, is like a plot device that he can say, oh, they're coming. Get, like, everyone get ready. But yeah, I just felt I was a bit weak. But his, his, act, his acting, wasn't, yeah, yeah, his acting wasn't. was really good. That's more script. We also uh, Judd Harsh came back Judd as Hirsch. Julius Levinson. <laughs> just pure comic relief yeah he was just it was I mean it's nice to see uh, him and Jeff Goldblum united as a father and son but the way the way they got Judd Hirsch <laughs> to Jeff Goldblum over a boat a car a bus there was so many different <laughs> ones of transportation it just got a bit ridiculous yeah, he basically plays kind of a similar role in this which is just the comic relief character he play. He does. He, he plays the same character, but imagine that just like with just twenty times as wacky. A caricature as, <laughs> of the of the nineteen eighty six. Yeah. One. Yeah. He's, he, there's a lot of that. There was also is it Vivica 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 A Fox Vivica uh, A Fox as Jasmine Hiller. Jasmine Hiller. Uh, she's back the, again very briefly. Yeah. <laughs> played Will Smith's wife in the and, first film. I and do, her she, character arc that she's. Yeah, go, go. <laughs> she's, she was a stripper, and now she's graduated from medical school and now become a doctor. a doctor. Because we weren't happy last week that she was... She was just... A, why was she a stripper? What was going on there? You know, we're like, that wasn't a very cool... I do like... It, it, in a way, it's a sign of the modern times, but it's almost so overdone that it's just surpassed being sensible, like, just ridiculous. Because I know, like, a lot of feminists would have watched the first film and been like, ah. Oh, black woman like she's got to be a stripper or she's got to be the sex symbol so it's literally in this film they're like all right now she has a medical qualification she's a doctor yeah it's like be it, like you can't but, just change it like that and and, the, and i suppose like in the in the movie world the <laughs> like the world has just been wiped out there'll probably be a serious shortage of yeah. doctors so it doesn't it, it does make, make sense it in that sense. but at the same time it's just like but yeah, it's so obvious why you years later, it. yeah, it does just seem like, oh, well, to be fair, she's getting on a bit. She maybe could be doing the strip, and I don't know. I'm yeah. not really sure. If there's much call for strippers 20 years after an alien yeah. invasion, I'm not sure it's what people do as a pastime. Well, that's, yeah, that's something we can get into with the story, like the way the world's changed in this movie from the yeah. first one. Uh, the other a member of the Hiller family, Will Smith's son from the first film. Oh, I was, gonna do, I was gonna do all the returning people first. All oh, right, all the um, returning people. Yeah, Brett, Brett Spiner, who I loved. It should have just been his movie. Yeah, he oh. has the best name in the movie, Brackish Oaken. Dr. Dr. Brackish Oaken. Brackish Oaken. <laughs> He's fantastic. And I've heard a lot of people say there was too much, there was too much asked of Brett, Brett Spiner <laughs> and he, he had too much screen time. I would totally disagree. <laughs> there should be more Brett Spiner. There should be more Dr. Brackish Oaken because he was fantastic. Yeah. Um, he, was, yeah. he was really funny in the movie, but it, this was a movie where, like, you were just grasping for anything to try and be amusing because the plot was not engaging at all. So every time he appeared, I was laughing because I was just like, I have to enjoy something here. And I his bits was, were funny. Yeah, I, th- but, I thought he was the best bit of the movie. But it was almost, like, so disjointed that it was like, oh, here's another bit. Like, here's another aside with this guy. Also, the thing, the thing about... We're talking about how they just brought back Jasmine... Mm. Um, Miller, Jasmine Heller, oh. sorry, to to just uh, be a doctor and then fall off a building. Um, but they <laughs> that was, they made her a doctor and then they didn't even give her like much of a role in the film. She saved a baby and then died. So it kind of almost completely undermines making her a doctor. Like it makes that kind of pointless. It was just a moment for like oh brought her back. Look, oh no, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, right? They brought Brett Spiner back. They brought Doctor Brackish Oaken back. Yeah. And the thing is, wasn't he dead in the first one? Pretty sure he was dead. I think people say in the first one, the last time you see him is when the alien has him round the throat. Yeah, and they should, but you assume that he's dead. Uh-huh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the Secret Service guy goes over and he's like, "Oh, he's dead." Didn't say he's dead, but he checks the pulse and he's like, shakes the head. And I'm, it's not good. 
Not <laughs> looking good. I don't, I don't, apparently, he's just been in a coma. He might, he might have just been saying, this guy's probably going to be in a 20 year coma. <laughs> yeah. He'll come round. That shake of the head was a 20 year I mean, I, that's how I remembered that. I was just shocked that he was there. I lo- I, you did like the fact that when he comes back, his hair and beard are exactly as they he's, were in 1996. They've kept him well groomed. There is that. And also they have a John, a very minor character, but they have John Story come back and play Doctor Isaacs, who's, a, who's Brett Spiner's uh, friend and yeah. colleague. Um, <laughs> Lover. <laughs> yeah, they have they have a lot of they have a lot of moments to get. It's very funny. I think their interaction is really good. Yeah, he nuts some mascara for it. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do have some good moments. Yeah, like, and it's just the, it was just like it was just like a very them. small character, but it's the fact that they have brought this guy back. Yeah, and and they also had Robert Lozier he played General Grey in the first one mm-hmm. and he does not very briefly but he did a little salute and he's obviously very old now yeah. but I thought it was a kill bit they brought back to but now we can do the new cast because I think that's there's probably other people that did return but that's the main ones okay. that you can think of uh, so yeah the I guess we'll do the first the main member of the cast Jake Morrison played by Liam Hemsworth uh, Diet Thor yeah so he's he's working uh, on the moon base <laughs> at the start of the movie and he basically, yeah, is kind of a pilot, and he's mm. basically the Will Smith character, or kind of the Will Smith character. What, what I would say is... There's two characters <laughs> that are, like, playing the Will Smith character in this I th- film. I think there's... there's Or three, There's or four. four or five <laughs> that have done playing the Will Smith, Smith. character. They're like, we can't get Will Smith. Wait, he wanted, he wanted 50 million. We'll get, we'll get yeah. five people that are much cheaper. <laughs> five people for 10 million each. <laughs> yeah, so Liam Hemsworth plays a guy who's kind of the... Supposed to be, I guess, the cool, handsome guy who's yeah. a bit of a rebel. Oh, and, he's also uh, he's also in parts just a bit of a dick. Yeah, I mean, it's like wh- why they give him control of any of this machinery when he obviously is completely Very good pilot, responsible. Though. Very good pilot. Yeah, he's a good pilot. It's one of those things where it's like you always have a rebel pilot who just doesn't play by the rules. But any air force or military organization would just not employ somebody like that. Who just completely disregards authority. But I, th- I, th- I think, again, it's you can get away with stuff like that because in that world... Well, it is a movie, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like in that world... It, I, do, I do understand uh, that we don't have a moon base with a giant laser on it. <laughs> you can dream. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jesse T. Usher plays Dylan Hiller and he's the second... He uh, plays Will Smith's son, actually. He played Will Smith's son in the first movie. Did like, he? Was it the same guy? I think someone said it was the same guy. I, I, I tried, <laughs> that may be completely erroneous. I tried, I tried to find that out. I, don't, I, don't <laughs> I know thought it you was. told me that last week. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that might be completely wrong then. But he, anyway, he plays Will Smith's uh, son in this movie, uh, Dylan Hiller. Yeah. He's um, a very bland character. Yeah. To be the offspring of, of... This is the most obvious handover, because at the yeah. start we see him looking at a picture, a portrait of Will Smith. Who's obviously died between the last movie yeah, and this well, one she, in a training exercise? There's so many, there's so many little pictures of Will Smith throughout the movie, <laughs> and all the time I'm just like, he's so, he just looks so nice with his moustache and he's smiling away. Well, that was him in the first. I time. know, I know, but I'm just thinking it's just like all I could hear is the Fresh Prince the theme <laughs> music every time I see him. But yeah, I thought like it's always going to be tough to be um, taken over from Will Smith yeah. and playing Will Smith's son. Uh, but I thought like the the Jesse T. Usher was a very bland character and I didn't really Yeah, he wasn't that charismatic. No, he wasn't. And I think he, he kinda had to be. Yeah. And he wasn't. Well they gave him a weird story which is like well his father's dead and then he witnesses his mother die. <laughs> so I mean it's kind of a somber role. Yeah. Whereas if you want him to be Will Smith, give him a kind of give him a love interest, give him some like comedy like people to play off of. Or he, doesn't really have, he didn't really have a lot. He, had, he did have some funny lines, but I don't really think he really... Yeah. I don't know. I think like, it's obviously a very tough thing to take over from that, but yeah. I didn't think he yeah. really uh, pulled it off incredibly. We also had uh, the gra- the president's daughter. Micah Munro. Uh, yep. Playing pot- <laughs> <laughs> I haven't written her name down, oh, so right. I have no idea. That's handy. <laughs> yeah. Um, Luckily I had that. But that was like the third character who's like in the, the main... The yeah, trio. but she wasn't. There was a lot of people have been upset about the fact that it, there's there's the actress that played uh, Patricia Whitmore, mm. the little girl in 1996. Yeah, they were like, why didn't they just get her back? Cause she's a good actress. Yeah, they didn't get her at all. So and then they got um, uh, Michael Monroe to play Patricia Whitmore. 
who I get. Uh, it was it was good. I thought she was all right when she was on screen. She wasn't. Yeah. She was she was she acceptable was, to me. Yeah. She was all right. Uh, Angela Baby. Angela Baby, the the, <laughs> the best name that I've ever seen for an actress uh, who plays Rain. Rain Lowe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, another pilot that they send up to the moon. They're kind of an inter- This is the thing. Like, there's an international organization now the whole world has like come together so it's mm. like pilots from all over but they still managed which to... i did like that that's one thing mm. that i did like that that was the message of film well, that, they all come together that's that, that's what they, they, i think they tried to do in the 1996 one but they didn't really yeah. do it well they did it very bluntly well no the, the first film kind of ends just after the world's oh. come together to stop it whereas this film shows you like we're still working together yeah we're still together but i thought like in the first one where they were trying to highlight that they did it in a very blunt and use of stereotypes yeah, and stuff yeah. but like this this one still has that but I thought they'd got the, the, the message of like everybody should unite and like we're all humans and you know don't, there's not so much difference they're less it. stereotypical I mean you don't have this rain character sat eating noodles or something like she has, she has she behind a massive Chinese flag <laughs> there's one part where yeah there's a giant Chinese flag but you don't have anything where it's kind of like oh because she's Chinese like that's kind of like she is Chinese but it, it's not that important yeah and the same with like the black characters the, Je- <laughs> the Jeff Tosh character is just the Jewish stereotype like he was in the first yeah. film <laughs> uh, is there any other char- there, uh, there is other there's the, like the other guy that I wanted to mention uh, Diobia Opere who played Detembe Umbuta who's a warlord I thought he was really good he was that. good and he's for the fans of Game of Thrones he was in that he played a he played the guard to uh, one of the king, I'm not going to waste it for people. So. Right. But he played. <laughs> Just spoil no, Game I'm of Thrones for everyone. I'm not going to. Uh, but yeah, but he was really good. He the played, Kenbi Butu, yeah, he he played like an African really warlord, uh, and he was kind of quite intimidating. And I, he, uh, yeah, he was really. He was. He was one of the highlights. I thought he was quite good in it. And there was also Nicholas Wright, who was also one of the writers, and he played. He played Floyd Rosenberg, who was a a character that I wasn't quite sure why he was there in the first place. And I wasn't quite sure why I was there in the end, but by the end he was he was uh, mildly entertaining. But I was just like, why, why, why is that guy there in the first place? Why is he following around Jeff Goldblum? I never really knew. I don't know about you, but I didn't really understand. Who was it? The guy with Floyd. the glasses. Yeah, Floyd. I didn't okay. really understand why he was there in yeah. the first place. And then just kind of tagged along throughout it. Yeah. Without any questions being. Well, asked. I suppose like, yeah, we could probably get into the story on that because that was the main thing. The story was very broken up not not necessarily convoluted because the story is very simple it's like the alien thing comes back and they tried to throw some plot twists in but they were just like oh it's not really a twist it's just and th- this was the thing the film was like so busy cutting between all these different characters that you never really got a grip on any of them or got to spend enough time with them to really get engaged with them so it's like you have Jeff Goldblum going to see the Uh, warlord guy and you think like oh this story is going to like evolve and these two are going to become like or they like some of the someone in this group is going to become a partnership or they're going to have like play off each other but they don't really they have like a little bit of a conversation and that's it but it was all to hint at the fact there was a ground war and the aliens were drilling which is what they've come back to do again yeah which we didn't know about in the 1986 one it was just like oh they've just come to blow us up yeah this one it was like no they were actually drilling and there was a ground war well, they seem to have, like, worked out little mm. bits of plot like that, which, I, I mean, like, when this film started, things like that, when they had the alien skulls on the spikes, I thought it was quite cool. And it was like, oh, they've actually thought what would happen after yeah. the war, and they've kind of made up a backstory, but it was like, there was no emotional content there, it was all just plot points. It was all just, like, this is what happened. It was all just explanation, rather than emotional, I felt. Um, and the same thing with the... Like Liam Hemsworth and Jess Tiasha characters, they were just cutting, like between him, between. Well, the thing they were trying to build up a bit of tension between the two of them and and rivalry and. Yeah, but it just didn't. I didn't. Think didn't it, do anything for you. It didn't, didn't really come off. Because yeah. that was the thing. It was like okay, he punched him. Uh, Jess Tiasha, I think, punched him like mm-hmm. at the start, or when they first when met. They met yeah. Because they were yeah, they had some kind of history of. Like, well, I think the thing was Liam Hemsworth nearly killed him in a training exercise. Yeah. So, like, you have that, but then 
yeah, they pretty soon get over it and they're like flying together, and it's not really an issue after that. Mm. Well, like, they they do get over it, but I think it's because mm. they're in danger of being killed by yeah. massive aliens. One, of, it was like one of the main problems for me was just engagement with this because I you like didn't I, yeah you weren't. I found like the bit one of the bits that like really when I realized I wasn't enjoying this at all was when they were inside the alien spaceship and there's the three main characters and it's like building suspense that they're all possibly going to die and I just did not care but usually in a movie you would think oh they're the heroes I really hope they get out of this scrape but I was just like I honestly don't care if they all died well at least we've still got Jeff Goldblum <laughs> Judge Harris <laughs> that was the thing like oh we've still got other characters on earth like, it mm. honestly doesn't matter. Whereas in the well, first I, film, I, if it, Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum had been in trouble, you'd be like, they, they can't die. They're the heroes. Mm. But in yeah. this, it was like, you've got so many people to throw yeah. away. They just thought, I don't really mind if they get killed. Is there anything you liked? Uh, things that I liked about the movie. Yeah, very little, really. I, I, I did like that they tried to do something different with this. So we touched on it a little bit. When the film started... This is 20 years later, and they've used some of the alien technology. So this one, the thing people should know about this film is it's much more of a sci-fi film than the first one was, in the sense that in this film, the world actually starts from a more advanced position than we're in. Mm. Whereas the first film started like Earth is 1996 Earth, and we're in contact with aliens. Whereas this one, in some ways I didn't like that, but in another way I thought, like, at least they're trying something different. There was the one, that was one of the things that I liked about it was that it was a new technology, and it makes it even more interesting as a sci-fi movie. Yeah. Like the weapons, the ships, and the technology, and how they're using them, and it expands the universe of independence, the independence yeah. of the universe. Well, they had, like, alien guns and alien spaceships that they were using. But it, it, it is essentially just, like, bigger ships and bigger alien ships. and yeah. And bigger aliens and meaner aliens is essentially the, the idea with, with the, the independent state of science. I mean, the new technology that they have, yeah, it's like, it's quite cool, but it's not necessarily a huge <coughs> leap forward. No, it's just, like it, just lasers, make, yeah, it, just, it just makes them more interested. Yeah. Them, honestly. And like, like I say, the bit, the bit when they went to Africa, I really liked because it had the idea of the ground war. Yeah. I, see, to be honest, I'd, let's somebody do a spin-off series of that. <laughs> alien, <laughs> alien, 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 alien yeah, just do some ground war. Although it did make me laugh that it was like, yeah, they seem to have forgotten that they were still fighting the war. Like in America, yeah. it was like, well done. We stopped them. Yeah, that's that. And I then mean, they went if, to Africa. It was like, oh, you guys have been fighting for the last going, 20 if, years. If you're going to an independence team, maybe you're going to need to give up about the logic of what it's actually going on yeah I think is the, the key uh, I liked I liked some of the similarities with the original like there was a little there was loads of little nods to the original there was loads of jokes there was loads of references yeah. throughout the movie to it uh, like the spaceship over the moon hinting at the first don't yeah. scene with the spaceship over the moon mm-hmm. um, and there's just there's just like loads of little the dialogue there were certain lines that were similar and the landmarks so oh, they love to get the landmarks because yeah. that's <laughs> the first one was just blown up landmarks yeah and now this one but for some reason Paris survives uh, that, was the thing they, that was the thing they, they said that line in in a moment when they would have been absolutely bricking it but, but they, that's what but, that's but, what the first one like, was like that's what the first one Jeff Goldblum's just there like cracking jokes they're having cigars they don't I don't remember shirt. the first one being like as joke heavy as this and no, not no, and, and the first one knew when to lay on the tension and when to joke but yeah. this just seems like the tone is all over the place. Mm. Like, they're literally joking as though, yeah. like, yeah, as though they realise that they're in a movie and they're obviously going to get out alive. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, there's no tension here because it's just like, this is all computer generated. We're not really here. Yeah. There, there is also the tension, um, I mean, the, the similarities with uh, the father's sacrifice where in the first movie the, the crop dusting pilot. Yeah. Sacrificed himself to save his family. He's doing mm. it for his family in the same way with Bill Pullman does that just yeah. for his daughter and it's the same kind of link there so they're not really they're not really trying new things but it's still no. I still I still think as a movie that if you liked the first one I, I think you would like the second one they put on, on yeah on they, the whole uh, yeah, I'm just maybe trying, not you <laughs> I'm just trying to even think of like things that I liked about this film because it was like a real struggle to watch I think all, I, I think maybe a positive too is especially we noticed a lot of people 
that were there probably haven't seen the first one, especially going on people next yeah. to us who were like, "Who's that?" <laughs> I mean, I feel sorry for those you, people. But you don't. You, the thing is, you don't need to have seen the first one in this movie because it doesn't. I mean, it helps a lot, but you're not gonna. You can still follow it. It's an alien invasion, and they're trying to stop it. Basically, you don't need to have seen the first one. I think. I I I, I guess I, I, so. I, I think it helps, but I mean, as a movie, if you went and seen Independence Day Resurgence, it's not going to make. I think no what sense confused them was the president. The fact that they kept there was a lot Bill Pullman as Mr. President, and they were like, who is this guy? Because the woman, there's a female president yeah. who they refer to as, like, Madam President. There's a lot of presidents. And but then the they calling him Mr. President. But the thing is, all presidents are referred to Mr. President yeah. when they leave office. But I suppose that is confusing, because it's like, but we haven't seen this guy before. In the Like, you're referring to him as Mr. President, even though we've just seen the president. That's their fault for not knowing what happens in America. For not, <laughs> for not seeing the first movie. Or just, <coughs> just not knowing that people get called Mr. President after they're out of office. Yeah. It's not the movie's fault. <laughs> uh, I liked I liked that the, the aliens looked meaner. And I think this is a much darker movie, because I've been watching the first one recently. It was more of a kind of fun, hey, Will Smith's there and he's punching aliens and he's well, having this cigars. Film, this film wasn't dark. No, but it's a, it was more like darker in the fact that it's a bigger <laughs> ship and we're taking oh, it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, no, I don't mean like, oh, it's just darker, it's, oh, it's blocking out the sun. But it's just, I think it has more of a darker vibe to it than the first one. Because the first one's quite a sunny, happy blockbuster, I think. It's not as, like, the, on this one I felt like it was a, yeah. bit, it was a bit more. I mean, the first For me one, it did anyway. The first one gets dark. Yeah, for me it did it. I don't know for me it did <laughs> the only, just, yeah. just like with the stuff about the ground war and like oh there's like okay, we, lost, yeah. we lost family members and you see like the, the devastation of the first one and everybody that lost and Will Smith's dead yeah. <laughs> Will Smith's dead I'm not going to argue with that and point just people like people having the dreams and the fact that the aliens are drilling and are going to block them yeah. it's going to wipe out earth And I mean I love the bit with the ground war like I've been talking a lot about the bit with the ground war I should just say to anyone who's thinking they're going to watch this that is, like le- that is like less than five minutes of the yeah, movie. Yeah, it's about two minutes to the mention of the ground war, so don't... <laughs> But it was the best part of the movie. <laughs> but there's, st- there's stuff in it that hints to a, a darker tone than the first one. And also the dreams. Everybody's yeah. having the dreams, and that's quite like, what's going on there? Everybody that's had uh, any kind of contact with aliens is having these... Yeah, but that was the thing dreams. I felt like... Uh, like when, That was the thing. When it started, like, oh, he's got a psychic connection with the aliens... They're showing you a ground war, which is like something from Predator with the alien skulls on spikes Mm. and stuff. I thought, oh, they're really going to, like, nail this. And then it just, like, lost it for me. But, like, there were bits there at the start where I thought it was going to be good. Mm. Um, I think, like, when I was watching it, there's just so much. There's so much going on and there's so many references. There's just, like, like, the first one had it too. But, like, with this one, you feel like there's so many pilots and there's different. You feel like there's a Top Gun vibe. I feel there's still a bit yeah, there's little nods to stuff. But Top Gun, you to like keep its main protagonist to like a few that you. Yeah, but like, I'm saying like just just th- there's so much going on. Like he's drawn from so many different things. Like yeah. the first one, you had that feeling too. But like Will Smith in the changing rooms with that guy, and he's like, "Oh, your your girlfriend is a stripper. You'll never be a pilot when your girlfriend is a stripper." Yeah, and that you know there's that kind of Top Gun stuff, and I just felt like that was there, and just certain bits were like the massive the massive alien. Just yeah. roaming about, you feel like, oh, this, is this kind of... A little bit like the end of Aliens. With yeah, the, yeah, with it's, it's in the Aliens and it's sent in that, you feel like, oh, it's Godzilla, it's Devastation, there's yeah. Jurassic Park bits, you're like, oh, Jeff Goldblum's being chased by a large... Well, it became like a monster movie at yeah. the last... Last then there's the bus you're thinking is this speed it's turned into speed for a moment there's Jim <laughs> just rallying it on a, on a bus the, the writers were just watching a lot of movies and like let's put this in let's put this in and there's yeah there's a, but I mean it was the same with the first one because they're obviously going back to the, the B movies and the devastation yeah. and stuff and it's, at moments it felt like a really poorly done Star Wars with the dog fights too there's just a lot of stuff going yeah. on yeah they even had the bit with the like they're waiting for the dog to like get back to safety, just like in the yeah. First there's film. loads, of, there's loads of little jokes, and there's the the Brett Spiner bit where he's wanting to crack everyone open. He's yeah. got his drill, he's got his laser. Yeah, I just thought it was amazing on it. Anyway, um, oh, and there's a the close encounter stuff. There's because it's like everybody's oh they're the symbol. Everybody's freaking out about that. They're drawing the symbol, and oh I, yeah, I got that the symbol. The I'm literally just the, waiting for us to get onto the bad because I have nothing on good. I know you have. I, I thought there was some good, but and I thought it was like a fun, easy watch. Uh, but I'll let you go. I'll, do you want to do the bad? Because you have a lot more bad than I will. I, I didn't yeah. think it was a terrible movie. It's not a great movie by any stretch, but it's no, still, if, you see, if you saw the first one, go and see the second one. Uh, anyway, do your bad stuff. No, I, w- I wouldn't recommend this. I just, would say just keep your memories of the first one pure. 
<laughs> Keep that happiness in your heart while you still remember it. You've done it. To be fair, most of the good stuff was you seeing bad stuff. Yeah, I've already probably done most of the bad stuff. <laughs> My thing with this movie is I don't have a problem with popcorn movies or, or stupid movies, but there's a limit. Like, there's only so low that I'm willing to go before it's surpassed, like, a level of stupidity that I'm not willing to deal with. And this movie surpassed it. Uh, yeah, things that other people have said, like, it goes too big. One of the things was it doesn't build suspense. Like, the first film built up, like, the, the spaceship came over the moon slowly, and it was, like, the Jaws, like, duh, 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 moment. Like, it's building up suspense, and then they're slowly getting in position, and Jeff Goldblum's like, oh, what's going to happen? And there's worry and panic, and then the first strike, and it's like, oh, God. And then, like, another one. Like, yeah, it builds suspense. This one kind of just, everything seems to happen at once, but the, the, and you don't have a... It's like it literally just, like, hits the moon... Hits the earth. Everything's going to hell. There's like planes getting sucked up into the sky. It goes too big. Mm. It goes big to the point where you can't really uh, care. connect with it. Yeah, or care. It's like, oh, it's too big. It was like, uh, oh, what was the other movie that we watched recently where I, I think I had the same criticism? Like it's gone too big to the point where like it's you can't really get involved with it. But this was the same problem. I don't know. What did we watch recently? Um, Independence Day? No. Warcraft. I can't remember. No, Warcraft I liked. I oh, Warcraft. Warcraft. Was really good. It could have been. Big like, Short. <laughs> well, it definitely wasn't the Big Short. Oh, uh, X Men Apocalypse. That was it. Yeah, there we go. X Men Apocalypse, like when, when it was like world level destruction. To the, like this thing, you actually see an alien spaceship land and it covers like a quarter of the they're Earth. Like, they're like, where is it? Where is it over the Atlantic? All of it. Yeah. It's like 3,000 miles wide, this spaceship, so it's like to the point where it's just a joke. Like, there's a like there's a Monty Python sketch, uh, I don't know if it was in the, fi- in the shows, but it's like, yeah, basically one of those things where it's like, starts off something small, and just gets like, worse and worse and more extreme, to the point where it's ludicrous, and that was like, this had just surpassed it. Oh, we used to eat gravel down a pit. Oh yeah, like in the four Yorkshiremen, it's like that, they go too extreme with it. Um, But yeah, this was kind of the same thing. Uh, And that was the thing, it just like... This was like four Yorkshiremen. (laughs) That was the thing, it all just happened, like that hit the earth, like everything went to hell, and they're scrambling, but there was no build-up, there was no tension. So like you're all, you're... I For some what, people, there's been 20 years of tension. <laughs> maybe what they were thinking was like, oh, we want to get a strain to it and it'll be exciting. But it's like, without a build-up, I'm totally I, not I invested I in the characters at all. I don't think they, 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 they went straight into it. I think really they had a slow start because the aliens didn't appear right away. It was a different alien ship. We haven't even mentioned that. It was well, a they, different well, alien ship that appeared to begin with. Well, they didn't appear straight away, but when they did, it was like they were there. They're not messing about when they go yeah. there. Like, they, between like the moon and the earth was like... A couple of minutes, and it was like that was the thing. It was like, oh, they're coming, and then next thing, they're there. There was no build up to that. But it's, it's the same like with Jaws. There's the build up in Jaws because you're like, oh, what's going to happen? But once it's Jaws two, you know what's going to happen. The thing well, is the same with Independence. Yeah. Day. Once you, once I don't you know, know if I've seen Jaws two, but, <laughs> Jaws, but Jaws two still does like a build up to the shark, does it not? It's not just throwing the, the shark. But the thing at you. is, from from our point of view as the audience. Yeah. You're still you're still in no doubt what's going to happen. You're not going to be like, oh, what are the aliens going to do? Are they going to be peaceful? It's like the aliens are going to invade and they just they didn't mess about be hovering over cities. They just landed with a big, yeah. massive ship. But it was like, say say something like aliens. Like the first alien builds up tension throughout. The second aliens is much more of an action film, but there are still moment, quiet moments of tension. Yeah. This was like all coming at you really fast. And it didn't really give you a moment to think like, oh, that, that's actually quite terrifying. Because yeah. it was so much coming at you that you're like, I don't really have time to sit and reflect on the enormity of this situation. Um, so that was really it for me, just that I didn't feel like I could connect with the with the film. Uh, the thing that we were mentioning, like a lot of references to the last film, you're either going to enjoy it, picking out all these things, <laughs> or think like it's overkill. If you're going to do a callback or a reference, like, do a couple, but not, like, not, like, almost every single point that people remember. I can't, I can't, uh, yeah, I mean, there is, there is a, there is a, a lot. Like, punch, not, yeah. punching the aliens. Yeah, they uh, always do. Sacrificing do. himself, the dog, like, waiting for the dog. The every, comment about the uh, landmarks. Every, every line from Dr. Brackish Oaken. 
Yeah, <laughs> coming coming back. They did the. Did they not do like the throat? That like the alien grabbing him and speaking through the mouth as well. Yeah, but I, you, to be fair, I'd be expecting that. It's the only way the aliens can ever ever talk. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> but it's like yeah, but they didn't come up with a, a new way of them talking. But why would they? The well, only real like would. the only real element in this. Oh, well, there's a lot of elements that are new, but like the ball thing they had, which is like an alien. Uh, another the, alien species that's yeah. been fighting with the first alien species. Um, I don't even really want to discuss this, but yeah, at the end of the film, <laughs> at the end of the film, they set up. Oh, they just—it's so blunt, isn't it? A third it's movie. So it's so just like oh, we've got thirty seconds. Better, better mention this. Yeah, it's, they might as well just have unfurled a big Independence Day three poster. <laughs> Come watch Independence Day three. <laughs> that's that's basically what. It, but yeah, it's done in a very blunt way. It's, but, but the thing is, like, I really. I didn't like this movie to the point where when they did that, I was like, "You've got to." Be you you made you made an audible noise when that happened. I think, "Oh God, <laughs> you don't have to sit through an hour." Well, it was like, "Oh, this is this has been terrible," but at least like at least That's it's over. over. Yeah. yeah, not like there's going to be a, a part three. And also, the it was the fact that they did like a what was I can't remember exactly what they said, but it was to the effect of "We're going to go." Like we're going to take the fight to them. Yeah, like we're going to go into space and fight them. But that's not Independence Day, is it? No. Because if you're fighting, if you're fighting someone in a different place, you're not gaining your independence from them because your planet is safe. But they'll never. I think the thing is, if if they just keep wait, if if they did do an Independence Day, Independence Day three, it was just them coming back again. It would just go on forever. So at least this way, you'll have some closure because once they're defeated, that's it. Well, they could keep going to different worlds. I, I, th- I think this will be, be it. I think this will be it. Really, two should have been it. it to me, it's <laughs> like... A, um, like with Die Hard, like the whole thing with Die Hard was it's John McClane in a building in a small location fighting terrorists. Movie two comes along, it's him in an airport fighting terrorists. When they start to get away from that concept of Man in a building fighting like a group. Well, it's suddenly it's not that film anymore. We, you might as well rename it. We ha- we haven't seen Independence Day three yet, so let's let's not get too much <laughs> but to me, too much like, into that one. To me, it's like okay, Independence Day, aliens attack yeah. the Earth. Independence Day two, they attack again. Like that, the the concept of Independence Day is aliens attacking Earth. Yeah, like us attacking aliens is a. It's a different film. Just make a new film if you want to do that story. So look, look but they are. They're making Independence Day three. Look, look, <laughs> out, look out, look out for a review. Look out. Well, they might, they might do. Look out for a review of Independence Day three in the future. <laughs> uh, what I didn't like about it is it's a very bloated movie. There's too many characters, and yeah. and not one of them is Will Smith. That is the real issues with this movie. And there's not enough. Was like two presidents die in the film, and. Like you barely notice. <laughs> so well, you know, you notice, you notice Bill Pullman dying because it's the end. Yeah, defeats the ship, defeats well. the alien. Um, but yeah, there's no, and there's not enough Jeff Goldblum. Um, that is that is for me. That is for me. I'll I'll keep my bad at a short sense. But that's that's uh, too many characters. No Will Smith and not enough Jeff Goldblum. And yeah. to me, they could they could have not had Will Smith, but they could have wrote it better. But the thing is, I, I heard that the with, with when Will Smith was still on board. They'd done two drafts of the script, mm. and once Will Smith was like, "No, I don't want to do it." Um, Roland Emmerich was like, "Ah, oh, I'm not doing it at all." Yeah, that's it. That's it. Finished. And then he met he met Nicholas Wright and another, and another writer. I can't remember his name. And that's the guy that plays Floyd, and they rejigged it. And I think they did it in under it. was something ridiculous, like nine days or three weeks or something. And that's this is the nine film minutes. we've seen. <laughs> but this is, this is the film we've seen now. And to me, if you've got really high expectations, it's not going to be your movie. But but if you if you like the first one, it's 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 really just the same. It's a it's a bigger, more bloated version of the first one. Yeah. It's very cheesy, and it's a popcorn movie, and it's a blockbuster, and the plot's pretty thin. But my worries so for movie this, three is. Yeah, like Will Smith didn't come back for this movie, and some people have said you can totally tell, like that there's a Will Smith shaped hole in the film, which has been yeah. filled by like other actors, and they've tried to work around it, and that's why it's a, a little bit weird story. Mm. Like if you had him and Jeff Goldblum back, I, it would come what, together I, I, maybe better. I think to be honest, that's what people wanted. But, but the thing is, like now it's like, oh, we're going to do Independence Day three. But it's like you didn't even have a plan for this movie. I'm worried. I'm worried you're getting too hung up on Independence Day three on this review of Independence Day Resurgence. 
Like, I think I've made my point that I, I hate this. <laughs> yes, film. I thought you got that across. There's, the hate's overflowing onto, onto <laughs> yes. the next movie, yes. which isn't even out yet. It's not even made. Just keep it, save it, save it for the movie trip. You never know, they might get Will Smith back for it. <laughs> that, do you know what I've thought? Will they just raise him from the dead? Will they just be like, oh, I was fine. I just, I was trapped. They just have a flashback, <laughs> like uh, Brett Spiner, just be like, oh, he was all right. Actually. Oh, yeah, to, to be honest with you, just go for, just go for that, because he's, oh, I thought it was hilarious. I could I want a spin-off for Brett Spiner. Which just is, doing his own uh, thing. Oh, yeah, he was still alive, and it was the other guy that died, his, uh, his yeah. friend that died. Yeah, I think, I think we've told uh, everybody who's died and who's alive. <laughs> um, Never really, there's plenty of people that we still haven't told you is dead. Yeah, so, uh, to sum up, I, I wouldn't recommend this movie. But I, I, it's not a great movie, but it's not a terrible movie. It's an average movie. But if you like the first one, I think it's worth going to see the second one. And as I said, there's not enough Jeff Goldblum. There's no Will Smith. There's too many characters. But I, I, I came out and I didn't love it, but I was entertained. I came out and I was like, "That's that movie amused me." Yeah, I and found I, it a trial. <laughs> you did not. Do it. I thought I was entertained. You know, that's but all yeah. I can ask. Anyway, that's our review of. Independence Day Resurgence and a little bit of the Independence Day 3 and Independence Day 3 so look out for that when it comes to cinemas Uh, if you've enjoyed it make sure to like and subscribe Uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and listen on Podomatic iTunes whatever your jam is download us subscribe to us on iTunes too 